so now let's talk about your marketing. More specifically, why most marketing sucks. And I'll be honest with you, a lot of my marketing sucked in the past, so um, I'm not making any judgments on anybody watching this. But if you want to understand how to make that marketing that creates impact, the type of marketing that just draws people in and people fall in love with your brand, and it just seems so interesting, then this is going to be a powerful resource for you. So before we delve into what makes marketing bad, let's define good marketing. And the way I define good marketing is, good marketing is something that causes people to take an action. So what action do you want? Do you want them to sign up for something? Do you want them to purchase something? Do you want them to put a lead into a lead capture form? Whatever it is, if your marketing achieves that, then it's good marketing. I don't care how pretty it is, I don't care how nice it looks, if it doesn't accomplish a goal of driving action, then it's not good marketing. So what is the most powerful tool we can use in order to drive good marketing and stop our marketing from suck, sucking? Well, here it is. I want you to write this down. I want you to remember this because this is going to be powerful. And if you remember this one thing, it will forever change the way you market and make it so much more powerful. Okay, you ready? Emotion creates motion. I'm gonna say that again because I'm, I'm telling you, this is the thing that makes so many people bland in marketing because they don't understand emotion creates motion. I want you to really think about this. What are the things that really make you get up and wanna work with a brand, make you wanna buy something? is because it has some type of emotional connection to you. Now you may be asking yourself right now, okay, this is great, emotion creates emotion, I, I get it. I understand that the businesses that I connect with, say Apple, or Google, you'll see these campaigns that pop up, like Google does these campaigns, where they have somebody typing into a search bar, right? And they'll type all this crazy stuff about, you know, they're looking up something. At the end of it, I think one of the best ones was, he was typing all these different parts of his life, and at the end, he typed planning for a wedding, right? And it was a story that they told there that created an emotion, but that made you connect more with Google. It made it more tangible, more real, gave it a more emotional connection. So what we're gonna talk about is how do we create this emotional connection for your brand? Now, we've got some great business minds coming in to talk about the technical aspect and how to take this and put it out to people, you know, do your Facebook advertising, Google advertising. But when you're writing that sales copy or you're coming up with these large brand strategies, what you need to understand is how to create this emotion, how to tell a story of your brand that makes it powerful. So we're gonna talk about creating a brand story too. But first, let's talk about the psychological and emotional aspects that make a brand solid. So the first thing we wanna talk about here is the parts of your brain. So let's go through this. Okay, so the, the human brain basically has three parts. You have your reptilian brain, you have your limbic brain, you have your neocortex. So the reptilian brain, the, the, the reptilian brain, which is the oldest part of the brain, that is the part that's responsible for survival. So if you ever went outside and heard a loud noise like pow, and then you turn around instantly and see what it was, well, that's your survival mechanism kicking in. Or maybe if you're hungry or something like that. When you get really hungry, you're not going to be worried about the secrets of the universe. You're going to be worried about where you get something to eat. So this is the most powerful part of our brain. This is why a lot of marketing is done based on fear because that is the most powerful response. Now I'm not telling you that you should use fear, but I'll definitely tell you that a lot of businesses have made a ton of money using this aspect of marketing. So the next part we're gonna talk about is the limbic system. Now this is responsible for your emotions and it's definitely the part of the brain that most marketers appeal to. So there's parts when you look at marketing that make you feel something, right? Maybe they make you feel secure, maybe feel safe, or anything like that. Maybe they make you feel like you're powerful, or maybe that you're the envy of all your friends. All these things are powerful emotions that allow us to, or make us want to work with something, or deal with a brand, or anything like that. Now the last part of our brain is the neocortex, and this is our logical part of the brain. And funny enough, this is the crazy thing. The logical part of our brain is not the strongest. Now a lot of us may think that, oh yeah, you know, the logical part of your brain, I'm a very logical person, but all of us are actually very emotion, emotional. I want you to remember this. People make decisions based on emotion and then justify them with logic. I'm gonna say that again. People make decisions based on emotion and justify them with logic. So. How does this manifest? Um, let me ask you a personal question. Have you ever seen anybody, or maybe yourself, you've been in a relationship that wasn't good for you, and you couldn't logically explain why you were still in that relationship? 
Well, think about that. That's because emotion was driving you. That person maybe made you feel something. And we see these crazy relationships. We're like, why, did, why are they doing this? This is not in their best interest. But really what it comes down to is, well, that emotion creates emotion. And now what they'll do, they'll justify all the reasons they should stay in the relationship. This is something we can observe all the time. Well, it's the same thing when people buy your products. They're going to take the emotional aspect of it and then they're going to justify why they purchased that based on logic. I remember my brother was purchasing a house one time, and he wanted the house really bad. And after he purchased the house, he was just sitting there for like 10 minutes explaining to me all the reasons why it was a good purchase. And I saw in my mind that he, had bought, he made it emotional, an emotional purchase, but then he was justifying why he did it based on logic. And if you understand this, this is going to make your marketing powerful. So now what I want to do is get into a couple of things here. I got a couple of notes for you. Uh, get into a couple of things here that make marketing powerful. So you may be thinking to yourself, okay, this is great, but how do we know what type of stuff to put out there, what type of message to put out there in order to ensure that we're creating this emotional impact? So there's two things I want to talk to you about that you can use in your marketing right now. And I, I'm not going to go in depth into them, but you'll basically understand these things. And I'll leave PDFs and stuff like that to assist you with this below so you can do some more research on it. But there's two things that we can use to make our marketing powerful. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is the 15 psychological drives. These are the drives that every human being has. These psychological drives are what drives everybody. Anybody watching this video, you, me, anybody, there's certain drives that we have. So like I put this up on the screen. So drives for like acceptance, for power, for status, um, for freedom, to, to, to defy authority, all these things are things that we do psychologically as far as how we make our actions or we do actions in the world. And if we can embed these type of things into our marketing, it makes us powerful. So one of the psychological drives, for example, is the want for safety. So let's say you're advertising a baby product and the baby product comes on, it's a heat warmer. And you may think to yourself, okay, it's just a heat warmer. So you might think to yourself the best way to market is say, you know, this warms your baby. But how, how much impact does that really create? But let's take another scenario, another commercial, and I say to myself, the screen comes on, and it's a cold, cold day. The air conditioning goes out in the house, and then you see a mother. She wraps a baby up in the warmer, and it keeps the baby warm, and the baby is now safe. How much more impact did that create on you? You got that picture of that baby in the head. The mother's thinking to herself, oh, if I want my baby to be warm, that I need to get that warmer. I need to get your warmer. Now the thing is, what we're doing here is we're creating emotion based on one of these psychological drives, the need for safety, security. Um, one of the things I did a long time was I worked in the promotion industry, so nightlife and clubs. And you know, you'd see these people come in all the time and they're popping bottles that are $30, $30 in the club, and they're, they're charging them five to $600 in here. But what is this? That psychological drive for power. That psychological drive for status, right? When you can do stuff that raises people's status, that's a powerful psychological drive that you can use to make your marketing more powerful. And you've, we've listed 15 different psychological drives here that you can use in order to make your marketing more effective. Now, the second thing I want to talk about is the 25 cognitive biases. And this comes from um, a paper published by Charlie Munger. And if you don't know who that is, that's Warren Buffett's right-hand man. They built Virtual Hathaway, their, their billion-dollar company together. And um, he talked about this in the psychology of human misjudgment, which is the 25 ways that we make decisions. So how your decisions are made, stuff like that, this is a powerful resource. Once again, I'll put the 25 cognitive biases up there, and I'll leave a PDF for you at the bottom so you can download this and see how you can implement this in your marketing. So one of the best examples of this, they were talking about that, I think it was FedEx. They were trying to get people to put the packages away before they finished their shift, but they found that there were, there was no incentive to do so. So what they found out was that if they gave them the incentive that if they finished all their packaging, they could go home earlier, everybody did it. Everybody finished all their work on time. Now, this is an amazing story, but what you probably didn't know, this is the first cognitive bias, which is reward-punishment tendency. So basically what this cognitive bias says is that we're more likely to do things when we feel there's a reward involved. If you've ever been to a website and it says, download this free report or download this free course to get your email, so they can probably sell you something later. Now, there's nothing wrong with this, but the point is we do this because we understand that giving somebody a reward is going to make them more likely to purchase something or do an action in the future. 
Now this is the same thing, there's more cognitive biases, like another great one is the liking bias. And this explains why we use celebrities and people like that to endorse products. And it basically states that you're more likely to believe something if you like the person already. On the opposite end of this is the disliking bias, which is you're more likely to not agree with something just because you don't like the person. Even if it logically makes sense, you'll probably disagree with them. So think about politicians and stuff like that. These are some of the powerful things that we use in order to make marketing super, super strong. So why does most marketing suck? It's because it does not add this emotional element. It doesn't think about how to get to that part of the mind, that limbic part of the mind that really drives emotion. Remember what I said in the beginning, emotion creates motion. So now that you understand all these different aspects of how to psychologically get to the marketer, understanding past just the demographic factors, but the psychographic factors that influence decisions and purchase. So now you can use those things in order to make sure your marketing is a lot more powerful. and You're just not another bland marketing company or bland, bland organization that doesn't understand that emotion is what really gets customers involved. On to the next one.